Hey family, welcome back to I Love Me Me Me. So today I want to talk about discovering love after divorce or a breakup. Stay tuned. Okay, family, welcome back to I Love Me Me Me. So before I get started, let me talk about my three online courses, especially if this is your first video that you've ever seen of mine. Again, I have three online courses and they are for the various stages of dating and relationship that you are in. The very first one is for anybody who is who needs to work on themselves. It's called the Super Single course but it really is for anybody who needs to work on themselves whether you are single and really really need to get yourself together before you get into a relationship or if you are already in a relationship and you still need to work on yourself really really defining if you need to stick with the person that you are in a relationship with who you are what you want what you need and desire um just some of the things to get you yourself together and then while you're in the dating stages or in a relationship you can absolutely apply some of the things in there and just when you see things aren't going the way that you know they should be going then you could throw those men to the side and be able to choose a better partner okay so that's super single but again you can use that when you are by yourself completely by yourself not dating anyone or if you are in the dating stages or in a relationship as well now the second course is for those of you guys who are in the dating stages you need help navigating through all of the dating woes <laughs> just maybe having some questions about what to actually talk about what you should wear how you should act per se um, just some of the things that is that are really important so when you are out there and um, dating these guys are the things that you are looking for i.e. from your deal breakers list are are any of the things are any of the traits characteristics that you have on your deal breakers list are this is this guy showing any of those things because if he is maybe you should think about scaling it back and maybe you were choosing a better partner but there that's just a small portion of it there might be other things that you need to consider before walking away and then the third course is for anybody that is in a long-term relationship or in a marriage and you need to basically bring the butterfly feeling back or bring more laughter into your relationship just have more fun bring the spark back maybe you need to really 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 hone in on the respect factor whether it's respecting yourself or respecting your partner just showing more love being more present that course is absolutely going to help you out. So definitely go ahead and check out my three online courses depending on what stage you are actually in within dating. So now let's move on to the actual video which is we are speaking about discovering love after a divorce or a breakup. The first thing that you have to think about is the timing. And you also want to think about the timing in the sense of you don't want to compare your timing to somebody else's timing when they started dating. You want the timing to be right for yourself. Which brings me into point number two. The timing is usually right for yourself when you start to think about what it would be like to get back out there into the land of dating the land of possibilities when it comes to love and that's just one of the things that you have to think about with timing there are other factors but definitely if you are starting to feel like you want to get back out there and do this whole dating thing again potentially getting into a relationship again then your timing is okay and i want to point point out specifically i want to hone in on um it doesn't matter if it's two months down the road it doesn't matter if it's two years down the road. It doesn't matter if it's two decades down the road. Your timing is your timing. So don't let other people put the pressure on when you should start dating again after a breakup or after a divorce. So timing and when you are starting to think about dating pretty much go hand in hand. The third thing is make sure that you have processed your previous relationship completely because you do not want to take any of that old baggage into a new relationship because it really is only going to make your relationship, your new relationship, even harder. And it's actually not even going to last. It's going to crumble a lot faster because you're holding on to all of the things that the other person did to you and um, you're not giving this new person a fair chance. 
So make sure you have already processed all of the things that you went through, all of your baggage, all of the things that maybe you even need to forgive yourself for, for doing. Maybe you were the one who ruined the relationship. Process everything before you move into a new relationship because you want your relationship to work. If you want it to work, process and get rid of all of that baggage from previous relationships before you move on to the next one. The fourth thing is to be optimistic about finding love again. There are so many people out there that say verbally that they want to have love, 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 but deep in their mind, deep in their heart and soul, they don't believe that they can find it. They don't even believe that they deserve it. Be optimistic about just opening yourself up to love, love finding you that you deserve to be loved, that you deserve to be in a healthy romantic relationship, that you don't deserve the toxic relationship that maybe you even left from or maybe that you were being a part of. You deserve love. You deserve love. Be optimistic about finding it and it finding you. Just open up your heart to the idea, to the possibilities. It will happen for you, but you have to truly believe that it will happen for you before it does. The fifth one I love, which is to create a dating village. And these are the people that are going to help you to stay motivated on your journey through this dating process because it is a process. I remember my mom used to always tell me, you're going to have to date a hundred toads before you get to your prince. And I don't know if I was at a hundred here. I might've been at 500. <laughs> but I do remember going through dating woes, dating, dating, and I was giving up and I was like, okay, let me date again. And then I was giving up and I'm like, okay, let me try this thing again. But I really did have a group of people around me to keep me motivated. Like, okay, don't stop. Yeah, you can take a break, but don't stop because it will happen for you. Love will find you again. I had to I had to also open up my heart and be optimistic about the whole um dating and marriage thing could happen for me again. Like I knew that it could, but I had to be really optimistic about it really happening. Like is it something I just seen on the TV or is it just for them and not for me? And I had to realize it's for me too. It's not just for people that we see on the TV or even the people in the movies that are creating these scenes, right? It's for me, too, in real life. So that dating village really did help me out. It did. So get you a dating village. It doesn't matter who it is, but just somebody who you know is optimistic themselves, specifically about love and relationships. Because if you surround yourself with the pessimistic person all the time, you, too, will be pessimistic about finding love and being open to love and and, and, and and a healthy relationship as well. Because the people that you hang around are the attitudes and stuff that you start to pick up on. You start to become the people that you hang around. So just think about your circle. If your circle is mainly pessimistic people, you, my friend, probably are just as pessimistic as your friends. So positive dating village. Number six is to join groups and activities to find like-minded people because that's only going to help you out to stay motivated. You're out here dating. They might be out here dating. You can share stories and everything and you'll feel like you're a part of a community and you won't feel like you're out on the island by yourself. All right. So join groups and activities with like-minded people. It's going to keep you motivated as well during this dating situation and also who knows in those groups with the like-minded people you could potentially find your love there because you just never know where you're gonna find your love at really you don't so don't rule out the getting outside of your box and joining these groups and these activities things that you probably wouldn't necessarily do but maybe you're curious about just join them and actually show up and go and just have a great time because when you're out there living life and having a great time, the person of the opposite sex will see you and they will be more drawn to you. Obviously, if they like what they see, because that's what we see in the beginning is the physical. 
before we start talking to each other. So if they like what they see, what they see physically, and they also see that you're having a good time, you have a better chance of meeting that great person. And not just romantically, just meeting great people, period. Number seven, understand a good date trajectory. What does this mean? This actually means that when you're first getting with somebody, don't think, and it's not realistic to think that you're going to see them every single day or even multiple times a week. You're not going to see that. So a good date trajectory is the first, let's say month, let's just make it easy. The first month, that's about once a week. The second month, it might scale up to about one and a half, which is basically like one of the weeks is going to be two weeks. The next week, it might drop back down to one. The next week, it might move up to two and then back down to one. So that's one and a half. But each month, you'll see that your time will increase or that it should increase. Maybe it takes you two months for you're having um, one week a date for two months and then it starts to move up. But at some point, you should see the um, your dating will increase so that is what a good date trajectory is where your dating is increasing in the very beginning is where you're gonna see the least amount of time with the person but if you're having good times good dates good conversation it will naturally increase and so it won't be something that you have to push or force it will be something that's natural between the both of you you'll both want to be in each other's company it, and it won't be lopsided as in I want to see you all the time but you're like ah, ah, I got something to do or you're making up all these excuses as to why we can't see each other and then so you want it to be on the same page versus lopsided right so that's a good date trajectory Number eight is that you want to be as patient as you can, have fun while you're out there, and don't give up. Because if you give up, that is the only way you can lose. If you keep going, you will eventually win. I don't know if I've ever shared this portion of my life with you guys, but from the time that I had got divorced up until the time that I met my now husband was a 14 year span so for 14 it actually was 14 plus but anywho for 14 years i was up and down in the dating up and down in the dating up and down in the dating i took some breaks i got off of the path of dating i got off a of line for a while i just wasn't looking i was tired and so i kind of went through that up and down up and down those entire 14 years so it's not something that's going to happen overnight. But could it? Yes, it could. What happened is that I had to work on myself. I had to work on myself, which is why I keep telling you guys about my online courses. All, all of them and every step inside of my online courses, I took them. From the super single course to the dating course to the now long-term marriage. I have taken all of those into consideration at some point in my dating um in my relationship dating uh, adventure i'm telling you those online courses will put you on the right path to finding love to loving yourself and then to finding love outside of you because the first relationship that you will have is the one that you have with yourself because if you don't love you why would somebody else try to come in and love you Check out the online courses. They are down in the description box below. They are, um, you can click on each link and see which one works for you the best. Let me just say that the super single course, you can, you can, you can absolutely um, take that course whether you are literally super single and you're no, nobody in sight is out there. You're not looking for anybody, but you really want to work on you so you can get this thing together. So the next time somebody comes around, so the next time, the next date comes around, you increase your chances of either seeing their BS sooner or you can see that they're a really great guy and you can move the relationship along. Um, to a certain degree and then even if you're dating or in a marriage but you still have yet to have worked on yourself to know exactly what you want need and desire out of a relationship this course can absolutely help you out so check them out I know that you will not regret it if you check out the online course it's absolutely going to help you 
So now, if this is your very first time here, definitely go ahead and give me thumbs up if you like this video. And of course, subscribe because I have so much more material to share with you guys. This is the channel where I'm sharing all of the tips and tools in order for you guys to have happy, healthy, romantic relationships. Just like I have, okay? So I will see you again in the future video. Two finger salute.